Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. Today, I thought we would have a look at um, something uh, a wee bit uh, different and quite interesting. This is quite an early digital camera. <coughs> it is... Um, a Kodak DC20 digital camera. See uh, Kodak Digital Science DG, uh, DC20 rather. And uh, well, it's uh, quite interesting. This camera is from 1996 or so, and uh, I believe at the time was the cheapest digital camera that you could buy. And um, it certainly shows in, not necessarily what the camera has, but what it doesn't have. Even for, you know, even by 1996 standards. So, it looks like, well, to be honest, it kind of looks and feels like, um, you know, a point and shoot camera from the time, from the 90s. It's got, um, it's got a viewfinder. An actual um, hardware viewfinder that, um, if we can look through it, I'm not sure if you'd be able to see that well, but um, it does have um, it does actually have a wee uh, square that sometimes is reflected. The um, you know that um, allows you to position uh, the subject to the photograph. There is um, <clears throat> a fixed focus uh, CC, CCD lens. I think it's fixed focus anyway. Um, it has um, a wrist strap. And there's no flash. Just uh, there, there just isn't one. Although one was made available for the camera. Not sure if it had plugged into the um, serial port there. Um, the camera takes uh, CR, I, I can't even mind what the full name of the batteries are, but it uh, it takes uh, this kind of battery, if that's going to be any help to anyone, the Panasonic um, CR, well it's CR12, uh, CR123A batteries, that's uh, what it takes. Um, I'll just uh, I'll just reinstall that back into the camera. There we go. So uh, that's it. <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, lights on the back of the camera. There's um, a power LED that's green, a busy LED that will flash when the uh, camera is doing something like taking a photo or erasing photos. And there's a memory full LED that um, flashes when the camera's memory becomes full. The um, maximum resolution of this camera is 493 by 373 pixels. That would be a um, 0 0.2 megapixels, just under that. So I think it's a hundred and eighty-four kilopixels. Uh, no, eighteen point four. No, a hundred and eighty-four kilopixels. So it's. I mean, this camera isn't even VGA. That's how old it is. And um, can anyone else tell what might be missing from the camera? That's right, an LCD display, or even a wee display showing how many photographs you have or don't have there's no way to know there's only a way to know if you're you have memory to take a photo or not i said the maximum resolution of this uh, camera is 493 by 373 but apparently you can turn it down how you turn it down though i've not been able to figure that out um but i have taken some pictures on it and well we're gonna have a look at just what the camera can do then we're gonna transfer the photographs 
to the Compact Armada 1590 DT over here. So, if you want to go about taking a photograph on the camera, um, I know what we'll do. We'll do something very typical. We'll take a photograph of this here cup of tea. Just uh, place it there. There we go. So, in order to do that, what I will do is try and move as a wee bit closer. Okay. So, hit the power button. And then I hear a wee click as I think the shutter opens. And I'm just going to go. There's another click. There's a picture it's taken. It takes quite a while to write this to memory. So that's the photograph taken. So now switch it off when I'm done with it. <coughs> um. So again, let's uh, take another picture of the computer. I have um, I have taken some outdoor photographs, well, an outdoor photograph with the camera. There we go. So, that's that done. So now we want to transfer the photographs over to the computer. Now, I have been able to find the driver for this. It's quite a simple driver. And while it does have a program, it's not something that um, I believe that you can actually invoke um, or run in a standalone kind of a way. What you all generally have to do, and I think there is a a program that will let you do this on the original install um, well that will have originally came with the camera but what you have to do with this is actually open an image program and acquire the digital camera image in the same way that you would have done using the uh, you know using a scanner back in the day remember doing that so let's do that this uh, actually does bring back a few memories. So, this is a serial to what looks like a standard three and a half inch headphone jack. And it goes into the digital camera. Don't try actually plugging headphones into it. It might not really, uh, I don't think it would like that very much if you did that. So that's the camera connected to the computer, and we will switch it on. There we go. Now, <coughs> what we'll do is I'll just move this chair out of the road. As well, because um, there's another trick that I want to be able to show. So, we can use any image editor... Um, to import the photos, but actually I've found that um, I've gotten the best results with um, Adobe Photoshop version 4. Not that I've tried any other version, but I tried PaintShop Pro 4.14 as well, and I can import one photo with that, but Photoshop will allow me to import a batch of them. Okay. So that's Photoshop open, and as you can see, it basically looks the same as a modern day version. Okay, there's, you know, maybe a couple of features missing, a couple have been moved round, and it's, um, the interface isn't uh, gunmetal or black, whatever colour you want to call it, as it is in the modern day version, but it's still basically the same programme as, you know, it's still basically the same programme now as it was 20 or more years ago. So, <clears throat> I think what we're going to do is, I've selected the uh, Twain source earlier, but um, I can show that for you again. What I can do, I can go to File, um, Import, and I think what I can do is I can select a Twain32 source, and as you can see there, Kodak Digital Camera 20. 
so we see what DC stands for. And the camera switched itself off to, no doubt, save its batteries. So, I'm going to go to File, Import, Twin32 Source. Whoops! No. No. File, Import, Twin32. So, what's happened now is the Kodak Digital um, Science DC20 Access Program has opened. What I need to do is go to the Acquire menu and select Cameras Pictures. And because it's a serial cable, it will take a you know, few minutes to bring the photographs down. Jings. You know, if I didn't know any better, I would say that these photographs are in black and white. Okay, now I'm going to click the transfer button. Why would the photographs be in black and white? Are they in black and white? This camera can take photographs in colour. <clears throat> As you can see, it's taken quite a bit to actually download these photographs. And um, I guess this is why we like USB so much today. Now, I know this is why we like USB so much today. Serial isn't exactly the quickest um, standard. I'm surprised I didn't use parallel for more data transfer -y things. I mean, even though that's not even the quickest, but I guess serial's more compatible. Oh, and there we are. The photographs are indeed in colour. It must download the previews in black and white just to make things um, quicker. So, as you can see, the photos are available. I'm just going to blow this one up to 100%. So you can see um, how big it is. <coughs> as you can see... While it is slightly obscured uh, by the different panels, it's, well, actually, no, it's not anymore. This is how big this photograph is on this computer's 800 by 600 pixel display. So, as you can see, it's actually, um, the pictures themselves are quite small. And what I can do now is to import them into the computer... Um, I mean, I wonder if I can batch save them. Oh well, I can just save all these photographs in turn, along with the other photographs that I have. Compact Armada 1590DT. And then <coughs> we have um, a picture of my cup of tea. Just um, just make it actual pixels. There we go. Cup of tea.
And then here's another picture of the laptop that I took earlier. And that was a photograph I took in the same kind of angle as my phone. And uh, what I can do is I can compare the two photographs. <clears throat> so in order to be able to browse these photographs, as Photoshop is, um, well, it associated itself with the photograph files, it's a photo editor, not a photo browser. But what can do that is uh, PaintShop Pro. So what I will do is I'll go into there. And I'll go browse my pictures. Well, I mean, this loads it up in a PaintShop Pro kind of a, a photo editor view as well, but yeah. I wonder if I can uh, full screen this at all. Can I? No, I don't believe I can. But it will certainly be a lot easier and quicker to load the photographs this way. <coughs> so, I can take a look at the uh, photographs. You know, at leisure. There we go. So, just to compare the results of the Kodak DC20 with a more modern smartphone digital camera. Here is a picture of the Compaq Armada 1590DT. Now, as you can probably see, the photograph is both quite pixelated and even a wee bit blurry. Um, there's no real overexposure, but that's because um, the photograph was taken inside uh, during the day, admittedly, but still inside. Um, there is a light on, which uh, gives the walls a bit of a yellowish tinge. Um, you can kind of see that the desktop on the Compaq Armada 1590DT is that of Windows 95, but there's no way that you'd be able to read the icons. and. You might only be able to recognise the desktop of Windows 95 if you know what it looks like already. You might, you can't, well you can see the Intel Pentium inside badge. It's not actually visible what's on that badge. Um, <clears throat> only a few of the letters on the keyboard are really kind of visible. And while the compact logo at the bottom of the display is visible, the Microsoft logo on the mouse is not. Now looking at the picture taken from the smartphone, if I was to zoom in you probably would be able to read the icons, the titles under the icons. Um, probably could see the Pentium, the Intel Inside badge. But you can definitely tell that the desktop is that of Windows 95. Definitely can see the compact logo. Um, you can see pretty much most, if not all, of the keys on the keyboard, what they, the labels on them. Um, you can also see that um, the mouse next to the machine, well, the mouse to the uh, back right of the machine is a Microsoft mouse. But the angle is actually quite a lot wider. In fact, it's really no comparison as to how wide the angle of the photograph taken from the Samsung Galaxy is. Samsung Galaxy S9, just for reference. Um, there's no comparison, really, between the angle of the photograph taken with the Galaxy S9 to that of the photograph taken with the Kodak DC20. The colours are quite similar though on both devices, so it seems that the Kodak DC20 can actually hold its own um, given the lighting conditions at that particular time. If we take a look at now at a photograph taken outside, 
Um, unfortunately, I didn't think to bring my phone outside with me um, for this one, but um, we do have a photograph taken outside um, of the um, back garden behind my flat. We can see that the sky is quite a bit overexposed. This is something that this camera shares with the more recent Kodak MC3 overexposure of the sky. In fact, um, it's probably worse than that of the Kodak MC3, but that could be just due to the fact that um, there's uh, dark green trees surrounding the sky in this particular photograph. Um, <clears throat> Again, it does look a wee bit blurry, you know, even given the uh, low pixel density. Um, and as you can probably see, there is quite a bit of noise on the photograph, which again is something that uh, this camera has in common with the uh, Kodak MC3. But what do you want for a lower resolution camera? And while the sky is definitely overexposed, I mean, it was a grey sky, admittedly, so you know, that could have uh, quite a bit to do with it. Um, the rest of the colours, apart from the noise, um, do seem to be absolutely fine, you know, quite vibrant and what have you. Um, so, for what it is, the camera can take reasonably good uh, photographs, even at such a low resolution. Now, the digital camera does have a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. So, I can actually, I mean, I'll, I'll remain in PaintShop Pro for this bit. What I need, what I can do now is go to File, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, maybe not. Oh, I'm in the uh, album view, of course. Select, sort, up. Oh. Okay, I'll close that. And what I can do is I'll go to File and then Acquire. And then there's a bunch of buttons. What I can do here is I can either exit to the application, um, open a side table of pictures in the camera, a slide table rather, side table, um, access the camera controls or list help topics. So if I go, go I can go to camera information if I wanted to and It'll tell me basically everything that um, an LCD screen would have maybe told me, or even an LED module. Um, picture resolution, high resolution, uh, firmware version 1.0, number of pictures stored, 3, number of pictures remaining, 5. Okay. I guess I could uh, find find out some stuff as well if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> really? Index. Ah, set camera resolution. Choose camera resolution and then select high resolution or standard resolution. All pictures in the DC20 camera must be the same resolution. Before you can change the camera software, uh, camera resolution, all pictures in the camera must be erased. When you set the digital camera resolution, it remains in effect until you erase the pictures in the camera and select a different resolution. To set the DC20 camera resolution for your next session, choose camera uh, and then resolution and set the high resolution or standard resolution from the camera. So I guess I do it from the computer. 
Right, talking of things we can do from the computer, what I can do here is I can actually access the camera controls. So that's exactly what I've done. As you can see, I have a delay timer, take picture or erase pictures. So I guess if I wanted, I can perch this, if it was a CRT at least, maybe I'll be able to do it on this screen. In fact, I might get away with it, maybe. Mm, maybe not. It's going to be a Hot Shots Part Dare moment. <coughs> can, but first, let me take a selfie. And then I can download that. <clears throat> to the computer. And there we go, here's me. Ah, my hair's a wee bit messy today. Yeah, I, I look terrible. Um, yeah, I know, I know, it's awful, it's hideous. <coughs> so I guess we could, um, I guess I could take some uh, photographs in another resolution. So again, I'd want to actually acquire, open a slide table of all the photos. But I think what I could do is access the camera controls, erase pictures, okay to erase pictures, why not? And away it goes to erase the pictures. And just to show you that it is busy. The busy li Oh, it's done. Right. So now let's uh, try taking... Let's try changing the resolution to standard. And now that I've drunk some of my tea, let's take another picture of my cup of tea. So I'm just going to do that. Take another one of the laptop. Okay. As you can see, these ones have actually loaded up a fair bit quicker. I can probably only uh, download the one at once. Of course, I can because it's Patreon Pro. Yeah, that's quite loud. I've been listening to uh, an audio book while been while I've been pottering about the house. So there we go. Um, let's have a look at. Um, cup of tea low res and I think what I can do is I can browse right click and select info and yep that's uh, QVGA resolution 320 by 240 pixels and um, 
Now just to get the other picture. Transfer. <clears throat> Still takes quite a while, uh, quite a while to um, to actually transfer, even at this lower resolution or standard, as um, it calls it. But there we go. But the pictures themselves are not offensively bad for what the camera is. The pictures are quite good. The colours quite good. Not really bad at all. Um, Compaq Armada 1590DT Low Res. So, what I'm going to do now is I will erase the pictures one more time. Okay, let's see how long it takes to erase them now. There we go. Oops. What I'm going to do now is just see how many pictures. Yeah, so if you're taking using a uh, QVGA, you can take 16 photographs. Great. That's only eight less than a standard, um, than a standard um, reel of um, 24 photograph, uh, 35 millimeter film. So that kind of brings me on to what this camera might have been used for. And I'm going to be honest, I, I don't believe that this camera could have been really used in the same way that people might have used film cameras. I kind of get the feeling that at this point, you know, at this, you know, given the low amount of onboard memory, the lower resolution of the photographs, in a way, uh, you know, this camera would have probably been used as more of a toy than you know, even, just even a standard point and shoot camera. Obviously a professional grade SLR this is not, and it was never meant to be. But, I mean, when I think about using a digital camera, the thing that I always imagine is, what if I'm going away? Say, say, you know, back when I was a child or a teenager, you know, when I was getting my first digital camera, which was a Kodak MC3, which I uh, did a video about five years ago, you know, which has a very similar, which is also a Kodak, which is, has a very similar resolution to this, except it's the full VGA. I was always thinking about, you know, taking the camera away in the caravan. Could I go on a caravan holiday for about a week with this camera? And I would say that I could only do so if, I mean, six to eight pictures a day. And yeah, I'd want the higher resolution. Six to eight pictures in the day really isn't that many. I mean, I, I guess compared to a film camera, it's... It's not bad. It's, you know, I mean, considering how many pictures you would probably be taking on a film camera. But the, the thing is, with a film camera, you're going to get good shots. And if you run out of film, most likely you'd probably be able to actually pick up another roll while you're away. You know, and then start again. And, you know, basically you can buy multiple rolls of film. Whereas with this, you would need to be able to take a laptop computer with you. And, and today, fair enough, you can, you know, just kind of put your laptop in. Not a problem. Back in 1996, very few people will have had laptops. And while it is true that some of those who had access to laptops may have also went caravanning, chances are 
they will have probably been in higher paid jobs and a lot of them might have, you know, been a bit more snobbish and thought, oh no, we're going to take our holidays and brought in a hotel somewhere, of course we're going to go to Saint-Tropez or, you know, something like that. So it's, you know, and if, if they're away to Saint-Tropez, chances are they're going to take photographs, they're not going to be messing about with what is essentially a toy, unless they're really into tech. In which case, yeah, they probably, <laughs> probably might take it. But, you know, I mean, it's it's a brilliant little device. I like it, you know, even even though it is a really low-res camera and really not that useful for, you know, how we would, how digital cameras overall has changed our photography habits. But, you know, and, and you can't really even print out a good quality 6x4 photograph on one of these. But at the same time, it's not too bad. It's it's I quite like it for what it is. I I do quite like it. What you could use a camera like this for is if you are creating a website. I guess it would have been perfect for homemade websites back in the nineties. You know, if you are creating such a thing, which you know a few people would have done, and you know you could have taking photographs and, you know, the lower resolution makes them perfect for either uploading to the internet or sending in an email to friends or what have you, you know, putting them up on AOL or something. So I guess that's basically the sort of thing that would make this camera make sense. And to be honest, the internet as a whole has has really kind of gone hand in hand with them um, with the digital camera as a concept it's the two go well together because it's you know where do you what do you do with your digital photos you don't take your uh, digital camera to the to the local um camera shop to uh get your photos developed onto paper onto uh you know photo paper you well <laughs> Nowadays, well, I mean, I mean, I could do a whole nother video on how digital photography, in fact, how photography in general has changed a lot over the past 20, 25 years. Because what we've done is we've gone from, you know, even 20 years ago, you know, most people still, in fact, pretty much any, anyone who even gave the slightest damn about photographs will have had a 35 mil camera rather than, you know, a really expensive digital camera that could only take pixelated, kind of blotchy photographs. You know, we went from having 35mm cameras that we would take photographs with, that we would put into photograph albums that, um, you know, you get out to annoy the, fa uh, annoy the family and the kids at Christmas time or what have you. Although I always did like uh, looking through my photogra uh, parents' photographs with them. Because I'm a bit strange, I guess. Um, in fact, my parents uh, used to do slides. And not the PowerPoint variety. But, um... <clears throat> we've gone from doing that, and having photographs al photograph albums, and only having the best photographs, you know, none of this... You know, dodgy, selfie, rubbish with blooming... Snapchat filters, I swear down, if I see another person with a bloody dog's face, is there own face? Stop it! Um, <clears throat> you know, we've gone from that to, you know, having digital cameras, you know, going away, taking scores of photographs, having, you know, spending a bunch of money on a whole lot of memory cards that you keep with your camera, you know, fill them all up when you come back home, download them to the computer, and then you've got all these reams of photographs that you basically set taking space upon the hard drive that nobody ever bothers to look at to now basically using smartphones to take photographs that are all geotagged and you know you can pinpoint exactly where they are and they go straight to Facebook don't pass go don't collect two hundred dollars or pounds whatever whatever you're doing um so yeah 
that's it really has photography really has changed and this week camera you know this this was part of the change it might only be an insignificant device but it's primarily because of its insignificance at a time when digital photography was very much in its infancy if not its fetal stage well no definitely its infancy you know it's it's the precisely the fact that this is a you know kind of a very insignificant digital camera well uh, you know that was released at a time that, that digital photography was in its infancy that makes it so significant so you know i'm really glad that i got to have a go with this brought back a, a lot of my own nostalgia about photography i mean i've always been into photography and so so's my family so um yeah it's actually uh, been quite a nice wee novelty to be able to play about with this thing and download the photographs using old kodak software to the computer so with that i think i will end this video and i'd like to thank you all for watching cheerio bye